little after 10.45. I am heading to the barn to ride. It's Sunday, it's my day off, but I did not get the horses out yesterday, so we're going today. Um, it is 43 degrees already. I'm so excited because it's warm. <laughs> I'm so freaking excited. I am going to flat all of my ponies. Um, and I am going to ride Renita in the double today. Um, I've ridden her in it a couple times. She's been ridden in it many times by Debbie. She actually goes really well in it. Um, but I am going to switch out the curb um, to try a different curb on her because I don't, I don't think she likes the curb that I have on my bridle right now. So I'm going to switch that out. Um, and I am going to practice my second level test on Zeke. It's been a while since I practiced it. It's like been since like December, but he is so much better. Um, I'm so excited because he has just been phenomenal the past two rides. He has been like hardly off at all. Like the last um, time he got shod, like really, really helped take the pressure off of that right front. He is like this close to getting his feet back to where they need to be. So that is like the most exciting thing ever. Um, but yes, I'm really excited. Um, this is going to be an extremely long video. Obviously, if you clicked on it, you saw how long it's going to be. Um, because obviously I'm going to be putting in footage of riding all three of my horses today. Um, I want to try and get as much content as I can while I'm still here. Um, I start staying at the barn tomorrow. Um, so I'm going to be staying at the barn owner's house on site while they're in Florida. She left yesterday. The trainer that teaches lessons on Sundays is there on the weekends and then I'll be there Monday through Friday. So, um, yes, that's really exciting. Anywho, um, I did want to touch on just trying quickly touch on a couple things, um, that I've been seeing across my YouTube and across my Instagram. Um, and this is kind of why it's going to make the video so long because I'm going to talk about this. I'm just going to get right into it. Number one, Ten's mouth. Um, I get so many comments on a regular basis. Why is his mouth open? He's in pain. Just countless comments like that, which I end up just deleting because at the end of the day, if you actually watch my videos or take 10 minutes to go back through any of my posts, you can see that he has his mouth open while riding 24 seven. Rarely does he keep his mouth shut. This is just a trait that he has. He quite literally like sucks his tongue back up and then brings it back down. So like that is what he does on a regular basis. That's just a quirk he has. He was tongue tied at the track for that exact reason. Um, so it just, it is what it is. I mean, it, it literally comes down to the fact that he does it even when he's not under saddle. We couldn't even get black background pictures done with him because he wouldn't keep his mouth shut. So I've had them done once before. Um, and we got a couple good pictures just because we were like throwing bags in the air and like trying to get him to like focus on something else. But when we tried to get them done the second time, it just, he was like, nah, 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 nah. so that unfortunately is the case with him. Um, he is not in pain, at least that I'm aware of. I mean, he gets the most veterinary care out of any horse that I have because of all of his issues he's had post track. Um, I mean, I have spent well over 10 to $15,000 in the three years that I've had him just on treatment for issues that I find. I mean, he, this horse, 
I kid you not. I mean, there's always something, but again, no horse is literally going to be 100%. No horse is going to be 100%. Think about people. Do you ever go through a day without something feeling like, ah, ow? It's the same thing. That doesn't mean that you need to call a vet and get $2,000 in vet bills to be like, oh, my horse took like one off step. You see this much of this big of a picture of a horse being ridden. I mean, unless you are watching every single ride that I ride on my horses, or you are watching, you're, you're riding them yourselves. If you're not my trainer, please do not give unsolicited training advice. This goes for me, this goes for anybody. Don't do it, it's obnoxious. You make yourself look like a jerk, just don't do it. So, anywho, Ten goes with his mouth open. He is so soft in the bridle. I would rather him be chewing and playing and chomping on the bit because that makes them softer. So that's that's my my two cents in it. I could care less if his mouth is open. That bothers me like none at all, not in the slightest. That would not put me off for any horse. I don't think that a horse, just because their mouth is open or they're chewing on the bit, is in pain. So you can stop commenting on it. Thank you. Next. Renita. I didn't ride that great in the show. I'm going to be honest. I didn't ride that great. She wasn't, she was good, but she was fighting me a lot more than she normally does. And I don't know what the reason was. We just, we weren't in tune at the show and we weren't clicking and it's okay. It happens. People make mistakes. Riders make mistakes. Horses make mistakes. That doesn't mean the horse is bad. That doesn't mean the rider's bad. That doesn't mean that they're abusive. Okay? Just gonna get that out there. Next point on Renita. I guarantee any of these people that are commenting anything saying whatever, she needs to stop rushing jumps, she need don't take her to shows until she stops rushing jumps. You know what? Come on down to the barn. I'll put you on her. I'm gonna have to have you sign a waiver that in case you die, I don't get sued because I kid you not, if I put anybody on her that has not ridden a horse like her, and not even just a horse like her, a horse, her in general, you have no idea what the heck you're talking about. <laughs> you don't. She is, a hot horse, a strong, like incredibly, extremely strong in the bridle, but she's also incredibly sensitive. So imagine if you're trying to half halt, like even just half halt like this, she pops up in the air. So if you're not used to riding a horse that does that, and you're used to a horse that kind of pulls forward when you half halt, she is going to flip over on you. I, I 100% this horse will stop and flip over on you. So before you come at me saying I'm aggressive, I'm being whatever, just don't. Because unless you know for a fact, because you've ridden her, you have no idea how this horse goes. My trainer will be the first to tell you that if you get on a horse like her and you don't know what you're doing, if you've never ridden a horse that has an incredibly soft mouth but is so strong in the bridle and not just like a normal hot strong forward horse, one that does what Renita does, you will get flipped over on. And I know from experience because it has almost happened to me. You cannot hang on this horse's face. You cannot. So for somebody who's sitting there saying that I'm being aggressive, I'm this and that, just be aware that if I'm hanging on her face, she will flip over. That's it. So 
that's all I'm gonna say about her. Just don't be a jerk. Don't be an ass. Like, that's all you, you know, like, just don't watch my videos if you don't like me. I don't care. I'm not doing this to please everybody. I'm doing this to show my journey and hopefully help people. I'm here to spread positivity. And if you're being negative and you can't go and be like, hey, no offense, I love your videos, but you need to do this, you need to do that, you need to do blah, 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 blah. That's not okay either. And I'm just gonna delete your comments. So if you are one of those people that did that, no offense, but I don't care what you have to say. So I wanted to throw this in here. This is Renita and her previous owner, um, who is a very great writer. Um, she had her for quite a while um, and competed through, I think, meter 25 or meter 30 with her. Um, and she had sent me this video of her. And just this, this is back in 2015. So just kind of keep in mind that this isn't this isn't a, like, you fix this type of thing overnight. This is how this horse goes. And she's come so far. I mean, what? Like, look at her. Like, she is so strong. Like, so strong. I wouldn't have been able to get through that line. I'm not going to lie. She did phenomenal. I would not have been able to get through that. So just be aware before you make comments. Zeke. I have been battling this whole right front on his foot, this whole right front, this whole issue with his right front because of the angles of his feet. When the trainer that I purchased him from got him, his, and I, I've already shown this, but I'm gonna put it in here again, just because people don't go back and watch my videos. They just watch the one comment on it and they're like, ooh. So here's the picture of what his feet were in September. These are the pictures of his last shoeing. So, he has come leaps and bounds. His feet are still not there because if you know anything about horses, it takes a good eight to nine months for them to grow out. Like, he has probably, he's probably got two more shoeings before we can get these angles right. Maybe three. So, obviously he's not, a hundred percent but I'm not just gonna leave him sitting in a stall doing nothing while we do this I mean I'm I'm not taking him and competing him multiple times a week he's getting ridden four times a week we're working on trying to get him muscled up and here's the thing you can't he is yes he is an upper level horse he is a third fourth level horse Eventually, he will be back into a fourth level horse, but he has competed at third level and gotten scores in the 60s. He is an upper level horse. But he's been off for two years before he came to the trainer in September. So half the times, yes, he's being ridden in a training level frame because he can't hold the upper level frame yet because he doesn't have the muscles to do it. Just because he's being ridden in a different frame doesn't make him any less of a horse. Yes, he's off in parts of my videos, but he still has to be in work and build up these muscles. Like, he's not dead lame. So here is where it frustrates me because I'm like, if a person had an injury and they're going through like rehab or um, physical therapy or something of the sort. It's kind of the same thing with horses. Like you're going to do the exercises, but you're not going to look great doing them because you're retraining your body to work after an injury. That's what happens with these horses when their feet and their ankles are off. They're in they're, It's basically an injury. I mean, and if they're like that for a certain amount of time, it causes so many issues. I mean, literally that right front caused issues to the point where we had to get his coffin joint injected twice. He's had his hocks injected. He's had his stifles injected and his right hip is atrophied. So there are countless issues that have been caused because of that right front. And if you want to tell me to stop buying 
boots or stop buying saddle pads or stop buying something and get my horse veterinary care, just shut up. I mean, really, just shut up. Like, you have no idea what the heck you're talking about. I have spent over $5,000 on vet bills on this horse since November getting him sound. So, I am the last person that you should be telling to call a vet because if for whatever reason I even remotely think that a vet needs to come out, I will call them. There have been many times where my trainer has been like, you don't need to get the vet out. And I'm like, eh, I'm going to do it anyway, just to make sure. So, sorry, I just had to vent there for a minute because... I know that I open myself up to a lot of different hate because I show a lot of the bad. I show the struggles, I show from point A to point B, and for people who aren't familiar with the process of doing something like what I'm doing, it's not pretty all the time, and that's what I want to show people. I'm not abusing my horses. I'm not cranking their heads down to their chest and roll her. Just, and I'm trying to retrain them in a classical dressage foundation. So when you're riding these horses, they need, I mean, they're, they're gonna balance on your hands. You're gonna have to check them. You're gonna have to be able to use the bit in a way that helps them, doesn't hinder them. And it, it's not pretty, it really isn't. I've got, we've gotten Zeke to the point now where he's not hanging on the forehand and pulling my arms down to balance, which is what he was used to. But now he, he can be up and you know what? I would much prefer to have him hollow out for a little bit to get his balance than hang down on my hands and get the balance because I am in physical therapy right now for my shoulder for that exact reason of holding over, I mean, if you think about how much weight and pressure is in your hand when they're pulling your hand down and you're trying to keep your shoulder back, the nerves and everything that comes in through here, this is one of the top injuries of a rider. Debbie just had surgery on her right one. Unfortunately, it's my left one. I'm in physical therapy, so hopefully I don't have to have that. But if horses were started and ridden properly, trainers wouldn't have this. Professionals wouldn't have this. So just some food for thought. And that started hurting and happening since August. So like, think about that. I have not been a professional trainer for that long but since August when I started riding and doing this I've had to start physical therapy to the point where when I wake up in the morning my hand is numb it's tough I mean and this is a whole nother topic that we're gonna get into eventually in the future when I have time to film it but Anyway, I just wanted to address all of that because I'm so sick of seeing these comments and I'm just going to delete them. And I even like started to respond and even responded to a couple. And then I was just like, honestly, I don't have, I don't have any reason to defend myself. And that's it. Words of wisdom. If you're in my position or you're even an amateur and you're posting stuff and you want to post stuff and you're worried about the hate, just know this. Anybody who is commenting stuff like that on your posts probably knows less than you. Because a top level professional, somebody who knows what they're doing, somebody who knows more than you, will not give you hate on your posts because they know how hard it is. I'll repeat that. Somebody who knows more than you will not be posting stuff like that on your page. So just keep that in mind.
Good boy. So this is my ride on Zeke. I had to take the sound out because there was a lesson going on, but our warm up now has been walk to canter and then canter to walk. As you can see, he's very tense and he's very rushy when he first starts. And it's just because, he, because he's a little stiff, but he warms up better if we start in the canter than if we start in the trot. So that's what I've been doing. So I essentially go from canner to walk, walk to canner, and sometimes he doesn't quite pick it up, but once he kind of loosens up a little bit, then things kind of start coming together. So I'm not really asking for much. I'm just trying to get him loosened up. I'm not trying to force him into any kind of frame. You can see my reins are a little bit loopy. I'm not cranking him in. I'm just trying to get him to be listening to me and in tune with me and listening to my body um so yeah that is what i'm doing here so obviously he picked up the wrong one the wrong lead and a lot of times i unfortunately i don't like I end up putting my inside leg back for whatever reason and confusing him so I really try hard to make sure that inside hip is forward and the leg is forward as well it's not too far back so just pushing on with those walk to canter transitions I can't really say how long I do it and unfortunately the majority of this ride was not fit well I would say it wasn't filmed but it kept getting interrupted because I was using the pivo and since there was someone else in there the camera kept tracking her and coming off of me because of the color of Zeke kind of blends in with the the wood and the the footing and oh, excuse me Milo that was in there is obviously black so it would catch him and then it would follow him so and again these transitions honestly really aren't the most beautiful but I'm just trying to get him listening to me so once I feel like he's in tune and he's listening going to the left then I will start doing the walk to canter transitions to the right and he is a lot better on the right 
and he's a lot more s just just smoother I suppose and each horse has a good way and each horse has a bad way um, I wouldn't say he's bad on his left he's just a lot better on his right <laughs> so um, just now what I'm doing since he's a little more warmed up um, I am trying to get him a little bit softer in the bridle so how I'm doing this is um, really the the best way to do this and this is the biggest thing that has helped us over the course of the past month or so is by me learning how to almost I guess the best way to describe it for people who don't know is just straightening the bit in his mouth so I'm taking a little hold and keeping a very steady inside rein and doing a little check release on the outside rain. Oh my god, he's so handsome. Look at how handsome he is. Um, so essentially, I'm just giving him like a little half halt every couple steps. And what this does is it tells him to get deeper. And it tells him to soften. And it tells him to go more over his top line. And that he knows, but it got lost in translation. Like whoever trained him like from the beginning did it right like they trained him a hundred percent properly so it just makes me feel a lot better knowing that and debbie had even said that she was like yeah he knows whoever trained him knows it's just over the course of the past years it kind of got lost in translation so from the canter to walk i then go into trot and 10 meter circles. I do a ton of 10 meter circles. And essentially what I'm doing is just taking a hold of that inside rein, check release on that outside rein, taking a hold of the inside rein. I mean, I'm keeping a, a, a steady hold on that inside rein the whole time. Um, and then taking that check on that outside rein. So it's essentially I'm closing my fingers, bending my wrist a little bit, and then straightening my wrist, and then bending my wrist a little bit and straightening my wrist. And what that's doing is that's telling him to get deeper and get softer and kind of come down with his head and neck and release that underside of his neck. So that's essentially, <laughs> this is essentially what we've been doing. And he's getting a lot better. Um, I don't really care that his nose is out. I mean, that doesn't bother me. Um, a lot of times when you're starting this, that's kind of what will happen or they'll get behind the vertical. Um, because where they are supposed to be is hard. I mean, it takes time to build muscle. So there are going to be a lot of moments where they're in front of the vertical and behind the vertical. So don't freak out too much as long as you're not cranking them in to create that behind the vertical motion. Um, then having a, a few steps of it is not the end of the world. I mean, it's going to happen no matter what. They're, they're not perfect. So um, this is this has been our warm up. I mean, the, or not really even our warm up, just our entire ride. We haven't been hardly doing any kind of movements, any kind of anything. Um, I'll work on some shoulder in if I feel like he's loose enough for it. Uh, maybe a little half pass. He re he's really great at the haunches in, so that we don't really... I mean, we do it because he seems to like it, but he much prefers the canner. So while we're doing these 10 meter circles and while we're trying to get him down and over his top line, a lot of times he'll try and go up into the canner because it's easier for him. So if that's the case and that's what happens when you do when when you're doing this, don't freak out. Don't, you know, just ignore it and bring them back down. Um, because this is hard. This is this is harder work for them. So and especially for him with us rehabbing that left front, which looks immensely better. Um, I mean, he still has some off steps and stuff and he's not 100 percent, but he is completely better from where he was to begin with. So now I'm going to go the other direction and literally I'm going to do the same thing. So this thankfully didn't get cut out. So you can see this entire process. Um, and, and this is, this is the reality of it. I'm 
taking a hold of the inside rein, check release on that outside rein, and his issue is he's so stiff on that left rein, he does not want to accept that outside half halt going to the right, so it would be your half halting on that outside rein on the left. Um, the movements, like the shoulder in and the haunches in and the... Um, half pass like going to the right is a lot harder for him than it is going to the left so you can see his head gets a little bit twisty um i'm just trying to stay in the same position i'm just trying to create a boundary for him that's not forced that's not aggressive that's just hey buddy this is where you need to be you know i'm not upset if he falls out of it because obviously it takes time and it takes muscle so as we're going through it, it's just, you know, it is what it is. Um, that was honestly a horrible rain back on my part, <laughs> but, you know, I just, I wasn't really, that walk pirouette's not too terrible, a little big, but I really, I'm not very schooled when it comes to pirouettes, so, um, especially walk pirouettes, I have really no clue what I'm doing, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, we've only schooled him a couple times because we've just been trying to get him back in shape. So now that he's down in Florida with Debbie, by the time he comes back, it will be a lot more fun <laughs> because he should be kind of worked through a lot of this stuff because I'm, for one, not there to interfere. And two, he's working with Debbie who knows way more than I do so she's able to get the process going a little bit quicker because of just her experience in general compared to mine so um now I'm gonna practice a little shoulder in and the shoulder in to the right is his nemesis and honestly this is not too terribly bad compared to what it was before he literally would cock his head completely to the left and he would not except that outside half halt half pass not the greatest i mean head carriage eh. and unfortunately the footing was just it, it's super deep in some places and not in others so he just you know it doesn't bother me but sometimes it makes him have some off steps and the whew, footing changes so um He's getting a little spooky because the ice is slipping off of the roof. This was back like right after we had that like huge snowstorm. So um, the ice is still slipping off of the roof. Um, so unfortunately, that's it's still happening. But I'm just kind of playing around with some of the movements. I'm not I'm not like forcing anything. I'm just I'm just honestly enjoying my horse uh, on this day he was being so good um and i was just having a lot of fun things aren't perfect and i'm not honestly i mean that leg the way that is it's it's a very beginner thing that you do with your leg when you're asking for those <laughs> lateral movements just by bending your knee because my hip flexors are not like relaxed enough and my muscles are not strong enough to be able to pull my leg back straight so obviously that heel comes up so that's just something that's going to come with time people can comment it on all they want i don't really care but um it's just it's it's something that comes with it's just when people are working on their shoulders that's that's my my issue so um, this corner he's a little bit jumpy at because obviously you can't see but right on the back side of it, where that letter H is um, is the um, drain and so water is like pouring down through that drain and it's super loud so you can't really hear it but um, and then the ice is slipping <laughs> slipping through it too so uh, there's one pretty big spook that he has but he's honestly he's just come so far he has truly been such a joy to work with, and I'm so glad and lucky that I have him. Um, and on a, the, the, the struggle's hard. It wasn't... I knew we had some work cut out for us with him because he was out of shape, but I didn't realize just how much it was going to take to get him where he needed to be. 
and it it's it's been it's been a struggle i mean it's been frustrating it's been expensive um and it's you know it's it's been a process but you know it's made me a better rider i think it's made us a better team and i just can't wait to see see what the future has in store for us um even his hips like that uh, the muscle dystrophy or that sloped hip that he has on the right has really started filling in too. So it's honestly been such a pleasure to see his body change and see how he's changed as he's become more and more sound. And his his right to left lead change is so good. His left to right lead change is a little sticky. He's late behind, but that doesn't that doesn't bother me. Um, I know it'll come with time. It's just unfortunately that that residual leftover issue from that um, bright hind. But oh my gosh, look at him. <laughs> He's got some little tempy changes going there. <laughs> and there's a spook. Yep. So he was already like a little bit like hoppy because I mean, it could have just been me and the way I've been out because he's super sensitive like I just may have asked for something I didn't realize I asked for um, because again still learning he's a sensitive horse shit happens um, so I just you know bring him back around just be like hey dude it's okay like you're totally valid in that spook so like you're not in trouble you're okay and then, you know, after that, he's just a little bit like, because he hates getting in trouble. Absolutely hates getting in trouble. Um, so, yeah, he's, oh, God, that canter looks so good. <laughs> he looks so nice. And he can't hold for very long, and he starts losing his balance a little bit. But, you know, it's okay. It's okay, because he tries his best every day. Oh, look at that lead change. Just good boy. Oh my god, I can't believe I just did that. I'm like watching my video, kissing to myself, being like, you know, going more forward. <laughs> uh, so, stickier side going to the left, and then you'll see this um, left to right lead change that I come across and try to do. And he does it, he's just late behind. So, um, I'm sure that'll get kind of worked out on its own, but I don't. If he, if he offers it and he gets it, great. If he's late behind, it doesn't matter. Yep, see, always praise them for, for doing it because it's it's not, it's usually a muscle thing that ends up happening. So most of Vernita's ride got interrupted because people kept calling me. Um, here, yep, I'm, I'm trying to do a rain back. Uh, you see where my leg is back like that. She seems, she tends to like rain backs. I mean... You'll see as she goes on, she, she seems to like them more and more as she goes on. I didn't realize she knew how to do them until this day. Because I've had I have been trying to get this horse to back up since I got her. Like, literally would not back up. Um, and <laughs> just one day she was like, oh, yeah, I know that. And I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? She would literally stick her head straight up in the air and, like, stick her tongue out and clench her jaw and just be like, nah. So, that's funny. Um, this particular day, she was quite, quite anxious. She just wasn't, she wasn't being bad. She's never being, like, bad, if that makes sense. She just, she was just anxious. I mean, she's, she's a teeth grinder, um, and she just, she's Renita, man. And again, I'm only human. I'm still new to her. I haven't even had her a year yet. And I don't know what the baggage is for her. But our best guess is that she's just anxious because the previously she was on starved her so they could ride her. So i'm just the the biggest thing is just trying to get her to relax under saddle like it, it, relax at all the only time she's relaxed is when she's in the cross ties and i'm grooming her <laughs> that's literally the only time she's relaxed if i walk her out to the paddock she jigs if i'm walking her out of the barn she jigs if i am 
honestly doing anything that is not her in the cross ties or in her stall. She's just like, (laughs) her brain just goes 8 million miles per minute. And looking back on this, I mean, because this was filmed, this was filmed back in the first couple, first or second week of February, I think. So I probably should have just worked on just honestly stretching her the whole time. Um, and cause she was just really like even way more anxious than she normally is. So sometimes she, sometimes always she tries to just blow through movements like the shoulder in. And if I don't let her, And I just kind of block her a little bit. Then she gets really, like right here. She's like, I want a canner. I want a canner. I'm like, no. So I'm like, check, 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 check. And she's like, this is stupid. This is stupid. This is stupid. Just let me canner. And I'm like, no, no, ma'am. And I'm not being forceful. I'm not. You can't be aggressive with her. I'm just, I'm being empathetic, but I'm being, um, I'm giving her a boundary at the same time, if that makes sense. Um, But looking back, if I get on and this is the type of horse that I have, I am just going to stretch her and see where it goes from there. I do always stretch, like introducing stretch. I usually start out in a stretch and then if I can get her into the stretch in the first place, because sometimes if I am trying to get her down there and I slip her a notch of rain, she just takes it and goes, uh, which obviously is not the best case scenario, but see how much she loves the rain back. She just, she thinks they're great. And I think it's probably cause I give her so many pets. <laughs> um, I constantly try and praise this horse and tell her that, you know, she's being good and like, it's okay. And she can relax, but Unfortunately, this is just going to be a issue for a while. I mean, she's been treated for ulcers. Um, I've had the bed out for her. I mean, she's never taking, taken an actual like lame step and I got her hocks injected, even though the vet was like, I mean, she like tested ish positive on one flexion and that was it. And I was like, well, let's do it. Let's just, <laughs> let's just do it. She's had her teeth done. I mean, I would love to be able to say like, yeah, I can fix this, but at the reality of it is it's, this is gonna, this isn't an overnight fix for one, like the teeth grinding, the anxiety. Um, it's, it's just, it's, it's this horse and she tries so hard though, which is why you, you can't get frustrated because she wants to work. Like she literally just wants to work. And she's one of those horses that's just like, all right, let's do it. Let's get it done. Let's move on to what's next. And even if she doesn't do it right, she's just like, all right, I did it. Let's go. Let's what's next. Like that's her, that's her personality. So it's sometimes a struggle (laughs) because she'll just blow through and pull and drag Um, and then when I try and back her off and give her a little half halt and she gets pissed and she, um, pretends like she's dying and flips her head up and like pops up. So it's, it's fabulous, but she's got some really sick moves when she's actually being a little chill. (laughs) So, um, I will, um, obviously uh, I learn from her day by day. So as, as I start learning more from her, I can change what I'm doing when I'm doing it and, you know, kind of go from there. But I mean, I'm happy with, with the progress she's made since I had her. Um, and I'm super, super thrilled that I still get that. Ooh, that looks from there so she's got really good movements and she's got the ability to do it it's just her brain is the issue so yeah I'm hoping that when I get to the new facility um I'm hoping I know there will be a lot more turnout so I think that is going to be kind of a game changer for her and for us just being able to be turned out as much as they can be. Um, if I can keep them out 24 seven, I would like to, 
Um, it just kind of depends on whether or not they like it. If they don't, you know, I'm going to be living on site at the new facility. So it's not like I can't go get them out of the pasture at 10 o'clock and bring them into their stall and let them in their stall so they can sleep for a couple hours and then feed in the morning and turn them back out. So, um, they're going to get a lot more turnout time, which is, um, very exciting. So I'm hoping that might make a huge difference for her. But the way this ride kind of went, I, again, I said earlier, I should have just stretched her, um, and really didn't do much else. But I, at the time, you know, you, you, you live and you learn. And I'm trying to just keep her with my hips and not let her pull and use her strength and that underside of her neck because her she is so strong in the freaking bridle. And I'm trying not to let her use that against me. And so as you can see, she's getting irritated. She's like, oh, just let me go. Like, come on. And I'm like, no, like, girl, come on, slow down. So here you can see she's now just starting to give, just starting to relax. Um, I mean, I couldn't even take that outside half halt on her without her rearing up, which you've seen in my videos before. So the fact that she is being this chill about it is really, really nice. <laughs> um, oh, no, that's starting to look good. Um, but yeah, so... I should not have played much with the counter canner, which you'll see here in a minute, just from how she had been acting because she gets super flustered when she's off balance. So that's why she bunny hops a lot because she feels like it, she's just like, I, I got to get back on balance. I got to get back. I'm, I'm off balance. I'm off balance. So here I'm trying to go. Can she, she swaps there. She's like, I, I got to swap. I got to swap. I'm like, no like you're you're gonna be okay like, just calm down so I should have stopped right here and then let her stay out of it like I really should have because sometimes I forget that even though she's a very schooled horse mentally too much of it can make her even more stressed out so after we had had that moment back there I should have stopped and pat her and then let her have a moment to think about it and then go back but I did keep pressing and that's unfortunately my fault here um and it, it's just it's it's kind of a it's a fine line sometimes you have to kind of push them out of their comfort zone a little bit for them to improve and then other times you have to be more conservative and that's just the hardest part of being an equestrian owner is being a horse owner is to be able to decipher between the two um so yep we're just doing doing some counter canner here and then she comes up and she's like i gotta swap i gotta swap i just i feel off balance i feel off balance and i have bonnets on all of them because all of my horses are pretty sensitive and the water um was dripping through the roof and landing on them so i was like that's the last thing i need is a freaking cold bunch of water droplets to land on her head and for her to rear up and freak out so um truthfully with her i just try to stay neutral i'm not giving in to the dramatics i'm not you know fighting with her i'm not being aggressive i'm not reprimanding her i'm just trying to shape her body in in the movement is is all i'm trying to do and she ends up doing okay here she's still a little um stiff on the underside of her neck but she gave me a pretty nice lead change and her canner to the right is a little bit better than the canner to the left i had to wet my whistle um so yeah, she's just so pretty, oh my goodness. I just love her so much. And this is the PS of Sweden Scarlet that she's wearing, that she's sporting. 
So this is starting to get a little better. She, you can see where she has moments where she starts to pull. And when she does, and I half halt her, then she's like, well, and I'll just friggin' trot. And I'm like, no, like you have, you have to round, you have to go, you have to move forward. Like we gotta build these muscles. And she's just like, this is stupid. So then somebody called and it cut the rest of that video out, which sucks because she does a really, 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 really beautiful counter canter on the right lead going around to the left. But now we've got 10. He's come so far too. I'm so proud of him. Oh, that's so pretty. He's just, he's 10. He's so sassy. So sassy all the time. <laughs> so, obviously I'm on 10 and he's a little feisty. He was actually pretty good this day. Um, he has come so far and he's still, I mean, he's still a little bit inconsistent in the contact, but I mean, he's a baby. He's turning eight this year and he had a pretty late start. He's a, he's a late bloomer. He was pretty scrawny and scraggly for a long time, so um, I think he's finally growing into himself, and he's finally starting to grow out instead of up. <laughs> he's finally growing into his legs, even though he's still got long legs. Um, so at 10, I do a lot of different stuff, and I do it all over the freaking place because he is just gets so bored so easily so at the walk I'll practice the shoulder in the haunches in um, I this ride was trying to get him to decipher the difference between a halt and a rain back so here I just asked for the halt and even though he's doing a very nice rain back I was like that's not what I'm asking for so I just stood, I stayed there I let him do it I let him back up I didn't get after him I didn't get upset you know and then once he stopped I was like okay good so then I sent him forward and then I'm gonna practice it again so the rain back you bring your legs back a little bit so you bring those legs back like where you would put them like in a haunches in or a half pass and so I wanted to kind of teach him that movement because he knows how to back up so as you can see I put my legs back and was like okay bud and he was like okay all right I get it that's pretty good I, I understand that now so the minute we would halt normally he would just start backing up and I'm like that's not nope gotta get the halt bud so you can see I asked for the rain back. He took back one step. And I was like, oh, okay, good boy. Because he did a backwards motion. He didn't keep going. But he did what I asked. So I pat him. So then I asked for the halt. Just trying to get him to da come down. And then asked for the rain back. And he was so good. Look at how proud of himself he is. He's so cute. Um, he is a little hitchy in that left hind. And that is just... Unfortunately, something that is, that's a trait of his. Um, I've had his stifle, his hocks, I've had his pelvis, I've had his back, I've had everything x-rayed. He's gotten hock injections, SI injections, stifle injections. You can see that little hitch right there. Um, it's not, if from what the vet thinks, it's not string halt, it's not shiver. It just is kind of one of those like weird things he's got. Um, doesn't bother me. It is what it is, you know? It makes him that much cuter. Because it doesn't bother him. Like, it doesn't seem to hurt him. He just, like, even when we're walking, so, like, say we're going out of the arena and I, like, go to turn him around, he hikes up his back legs, like, really, like, he, like, pulls them up really quick. They're, like, like, ah. um, and that's just, that's just him. So, he's still... Just a little up and a little bit bracy, hollowed out, and I think a lot of it was just because he was, like, fresh and anxious this day because of the weather. Um, but he gave me a really good, oh, excuse me, he gave me a really good ride nonetheless, so, um, 
here I'm just kind of deciphering those you know that halt that rain back and I can't believe that I can even do a sitting trot on him like I remember when I first got my dressage saddle like before August of last year like a over not even a year ago and I couldn't even sit the trot <laughs> so it's just crazy how far both of us have come Ooh, that looks pretty nice um so typically with him um I'll go from stretching to picking him up to stretching to 10 meter circle then I'll go back down to the walk and we'll do a shoulder in or we'll do a haunches in um or we'll practice the half pass at the walk and then we'll go back to trotting and then we'll go up to cantering and then we'll go back down but what I have f found in the last p couple lessons in the last training rides Debbie did on 10, I am trying to keep him in the movements too long um, while I'm teaching him. So what we, what she told me, she's like, you know, if you're going into the shoulder and like do your 10 meter circle, step into the shoulder in for like three or four steps and then get out of it before it starts getting slow and before it starts getting hard because you want them to come out of that movement wanting to do it again like think it's fun so that was some really good advice and it's definitely something that since that since she told me that I have done and it has made a huge difference so the next time I can get some videos um, if you follow my Instagram you will have seen that 10 has uvitis in his left eye so we are on day three I, f I caught it I caught it Wednesday had the vet out later or on Thursday and started treating it Thursday so it's not getting worse and it looks like it's getting a little bit better but I'm hoping this isn't going to be a recurring issue and I'm hoping he just banged it on something or I don't know so that's unfortunate, but um, otherwise I would be at a show this weekend with Renita, but the emergency vet bill. Um, just, I'm kind of capped out right now <laughs> when it comes to having to pay off vet bills, and I haven't gone shopping, I haven't bought anything, and it just, yeah. So, anyway, just practicing some movements with him. Um, I think I'm going to hop off of this voiceover and just let you kind of watch my ride on 10. If you have any questions, um, feel free to comment down below, but I will see you guys in my next video that I'm going to edit now. See ya. Start.
hearts racing But I don't know if I like this chasing And playing and waiting around It's a shame that my hands start shaking All of the time when you're around me But this time, this time Girl, I know what's bothering me
To my life, such a magic feeling when you tore down my walls. I wish I could go back to right before you told me I'd try to change it all. But look at us now, I could have gone so far. It hurts to realize we're parted. Yeah, look at us now, this is who we are. And I just know things will never be the same We're like strangers again, again, again Strangers again 